right, thank you for tuning in to TTV. I'm your host, Toya, and today is Communion Sunday. And I have a different treat for you guys. I'm actually making an actual dish for you guys to see. Um, and we're going to start out with acorn squash. Okay, so <laughs> this is what it looks like. I already cut it because I wanted to make sure that it was still good because I had it for a minute. Um, which is one of the things I like about the squashes because you can have them for a minute and they still be okay. So, and I apologize for the background noise. If you don't hear it, that's my dog drinking water. And my nephew is here. You want to say hi? Hi. This is my nephew here. Um, spending some time with me while I'm here doing all of this. But like I said, I'm going to cook some um, acorn squash for you guys and show you guys how to do it. But let's start off with the benefits. Now, like I said before in previous videos, any of your vegetables and your fruits, they're going to be high in antioxidants, which are good for your heart health. So they help strengthen your heart so from heart related issues like heart disease, stroke, heart attack, things like that. So that's why they're always telling you get your vegetables in, especially your green leafy vegetables, okay? Um, outside of that, um, squash is good for, the acorn squash is really good for vitamin A. So if you're on blood thinners, you might want to watch it. Um, I believe you got to watch it with vitamin A. But anyway, you need to consult your doctor anyway as far as how, the foods that you need to be careful of. But squash is one of those that is high in vitamin A, which again is good for your heart. Um, it also has a lot of beta carotene in it because if you notice, it is an orange squash. It is an orange fruit. So that's what the inside looks like. Here, wait, let me turn the light off. There you go. And now you can see that's what the inside looks like. So you can see the yellow part, the orangish yellow part that's on the outside. That's the beta carotene. So beta carotene is good for your eyes and it has like 9% um, of the beta carotene that you need for your day is in squash. So um, in addition to that, it also has properties in it that will help with cancer. So help fighting off the cancer cells and things like that. So it's a good ingredient to include in your day-to-day -day, um, or your weekly food schedules. Again, I apologize y'all. In your week-to-week -week food schedules. And I'm gonna give you a couple of ways that you can do this. Um, now. You can always use squash just as it is to where you just cut it up, you peel it, cut it up, dice it up, you know, saute it or bake it in the oven with a little olive oil, salt and pepper, and you can go. You can blend it up, make it into a soup like that as well, where you cut it up in chunks and cook it in a broth, and then you take everything and you put it in a blender, blend it up, and now you have soup. But this one is one I made for Thanksgiving one year. I think it was this past Thanksgiving, and everybody loved it. I've actually had to, I put my dressing together, which is this right here, and my son, my oldest son keeps coming in here picking at my dressing, so, and it's not even cooked yet. So I really wanted to give you this and give you two different options because I have some dressing here and then I have some, a grain mixture here, a grain melody, to give you two different ways in which you can use this acorn squash. Now, like I said, I did cut it, but as, as you can see, it's not cut even. One is bigger than the other. <laughs> So, um, one of the things I'm going to do, and I'm sorry I didn't pull the knife out. One of the things I'm going to do with this is I'm going to even this out and use it for my dogs. Because dogs can also have acorn squash. But I want to, but let's clean it out first. So to clean it out, you just need a spoon and you take it and you just clean it out. Now what I find is if you go around and you scrape the walls of the squash, um, it's an easier way to get it cleaned out. And if you have the patience and the time, you can actually take, um, remove the, the shredded skin parts of this and clean it up. And then you can um, put a little salt, pepper, and oil on the, um, the, the seeds of this. And you can eat them. You have pumpkin seeds because squash is part of the pumpkin family. All right, so I got both of these cleaned out. And for the recipe that I'm going to show you guys, you do not have to peel it, okay? So you can leave it just like it is. All right. But this one I'm going to cut a little more just kind of make it even because <laughs> I didn't. And I'm going to use it for the dogs. So make sure you have a sharp knife when you're cutting this because it is a thicker skin. All right. So that'll work. And like I said, I'm going to cut. What I'm going to do is peel these off, boil this in some broth, add some stuff for the dogs, and that's what I'm going to put it in. So right now we got the insides. They're all cleaned out. Okay. Ooh, if 
you can see this. Whoop, I keep moving the wrong one. <laughs> okay, so they all cleaned out. Now, right here, what I have is some maple syrup and some vegan butter. Okay, you can use, if you're not vegan, you don't have to use it. Um, and before y'all go asking, Toya, are you vegan? I am probably about 90, 95% vegan, okay? I'm not 100% vegan. Um, but I do try to be vegan when I'm at home, cook vegan. When I go out, it's a whole nother story. But at home, I try to do it right. So we're just going to take this and we're going to brush the insides. Okay? And get it nice and coated. Okay? And if it puddles up a little bit, it's okay. Do the second one, and you're gonna do both of these like this because, like I said, acorn squash is very good for you, good for your heart, it's a good way to have it in you, um, in your diet. I mean, so I just have you can put this on the baking sheet. I have this little pan right here, they fit nicely in there to where they can pretty much stand up like this. See, and then that's what they look like after I put the I know the sun is kind of bright, so. I don't know if you can see inside or not. But anyway, that's what you do. And I'm going to set this to the side because I want to show you what I have here. So this, I just made some regular cornbread. So this is some vegan cornbread, okay? And again, I'm sorry, the lighting, man. The sun is like really bright today. But it's just some regular vegan cornbread. I actually use the Quaker Oat, um, Oats Cornmeal recipe is what I use. And the only difference is, is I use just egg instead of a real egg. Um, I make my own hemp milk. So I use hemp seed milk in place of it because I find hemp seed milk doesn't make um, things taste funny. I notice when I use almond milk that the stuff will have what I associate with like a fruit loop undertone to it. So, or like aftertaste. So I don't like using that. And I find hemp seed really has a neutral taste when it goes into your food so I like to use it whenever I'm baking or cooking like if I make mac and cheese or vegan mac and cheese I use hemp milk because it doesn't it's not overpowering um but that's all this is is just the cornbread and some bread crumbs which I had a sourdough bread a onion bread so I put that in there mix it up with some onions green peppers and um onions garlic green pepper and celery and I did put sage in it because dressing isn't dressing if it doesn't have sage. <laughs> so I put some sage in here as well. And that's where I stop. Oh, and some uh, I used some uh, vegan chicken broth in this. So that's all I did in this. Now here I have a mixture of thyme and rosemary. Now this is not something that is typical in your dressing. But because this is a different kind that I'm doing, I'm actually putting it in this as well as the wild grains. So those are the wild grains once they're cooked. And this is what it is. I think I got this at Whole Foods. Yep, but it's a whole grain melody. So it has um, brown rice, rye, wheat, wild rice, and quinoa. And I cooked it again in the um, vegan chicken broth. So it's really good. It's a little undercooked too because I'm gonna add a little bit of water to this so that as it cooks in with the acorn squash, it doesn't dry out, okay? And I'm also not going to put it in there right away, but we'll get to that. In addition to this, because this is a sweeter dish, it's dishes on the sweeter side, um, I have right here some cranberries. Just get them herbs in there. Some dried cherries and some cranberries that I'm going to add into this as well. Okay? Because that'll go along with the sweetness of the maple syrup that we put in there. All right. Way. And then the other thing I wanted to put in here, or at least in the rice, is some walnuts. Because for whatever reason, I just feel like this is going to be good in here. So I'm going to put these walnuts in here. Oh, the other thing I used, um, I didn't have any mushrooms. So I used a little bit of a mushroom powder. So it's this mushroom powder I get from the Asian market. Um, and it has mushroom extract in it from different mushrooms. And I use that instead because I didn't have any. All right, do one more. And then I feel like that'll be right. All right. So I'm going to mix this up. And I'm just going to add just a little bit of water. Because it's not 100% done. And I'm going to set this one to the side and just let that stuff marinate. 
Um, normally I would, I think the last time I did this, I put some kale in this, but I'm gonna cook, I have a little bit of this dinosaur kale over here, so I'm actually gonna put that in there. I'm gonna cook it off to the side to have with it on the side, since I have a little bit of cornbread left. Now this is a very hearty meal. You don't have to have anything with it. Um, if you want the original recipe that I got for this dressing, it called for um, sausage, a vegan sausage. So again, if you're not vegan, that's fine. You can put some um, sausage in here, like cook it like a ground, like take the skin off of it and cook it up like that. Like you're gonna do lasagna or something. And you can add it to this. Me, it's fine like this. I don't see a reason for adding that, so I don't. So I'm gonna add the stuffing to the one. I think I'm gonna do the smaller cavity because I can put this on the outside. When I tell y'all this is so good, oh my God, it's so good. This was the one thing like they told me I didn't make enough of at Thanksgiving. Now you don't have to overdo it. I'm about to take some of this off. And I have another little bowl here that I can use to put the rest of this on the side. But mm, I'm telling y'all, it's good. So what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna put this in the oven. I'm gonna put it in the oven at 400. And I'm gonna cook it for about 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, I'm gonna add the rice to the empty one. And then I'm gonna cook it for another um, 10 minutes. So 30 minutes all together. If all you're doing is a dressing, then you can do 30 minutes all together by itself. Otherwise, like I said, I'm gonna cook it for 20 minutes. That'll get the um, butternut squash, I mean, that'll get the acorn squash tender. You can come here if you want. Come here. Not you, you get out the kitchen. Bend down. This is my nephew. This is Quentin, my nephew, my sister's youngest child. All right, so like I said, I'm gonna put this in the oven. For about 20 minutes and then I'm gonna come back and I'll have in that time my uh, dinosaur kale which I did a video on dinosaur kale before if you haven't seen it you can check it out but I'm gonna saute me some of the dinosaur kale um, let this bake and then I'm gonna come back to you guys and show you the end finished product okay so I'll be right back okay so welcome back um, I went on and I cooked these butternut squash and I'll show you that in a second one thing I forgot to tell you guys is is you do have to cover it with aluminum foil when you're baking it and that's so that the butternut squash will soften up so let me get a mint and I will bring it closer so you can see the beautiful acorn squash that I keep calling butternut squash so that right there is the stuffing that one right there is the rice okay so it's nice and hot and then to go with it I have my favorite salad, which is a fatouche salad. It's very simple. It's just some red onion, some cucumber, some tomato, some pita chips with romaine lettuce. And then I have my dressing that I put with it, Mediterranean dressing. And this is what the um, kale came out. So what I did was um, I cut up some Brussels sprout with it. Um, that's what you see in there. Let me go to move the right way. <laughs> but you see the Brussels sprouts in there along with the kale and the onion and the garlic. And what I did is I used the leftover maple syrup after this was done cooking. I put the maple syrup in there with a little balsamic vinegar and a touch of honey. And that's this. So that's my dinosaur kale. And of course my slice of cornbread. And this is the meal. Now, usually like last time I made this, I only ate half, half of one of these. So this is enough for like four people. Um, as long as those four people aren't great aren't really greedy <laughs> you can also make a gravy to go over it um, I just put together a very simple chicken flavored gravy and that's the gravy right there to go on top of it my nephew here and he said he wanted gravy so I made him some gravy but um, this is it this is acorn squash and this is uh, one of the things that you can do with it like I said the other thing you can do with it is just chop it up and um, you can put it in salad, you can put it in um, roasted vegetables, you can 
blend it up and put it in and make it a soup. Like there's so many versatile things that you can do with the acorn squash. With squash in general, just any of the squashes, there's so much that you can do with it. Um, YouTube, of course, is a fountain of recipes for things like this. You can also go out on to, you know, just regular Google it and get a lot, a lot of recipes that way as well. But acorn squash is, you know, a very delicious squash and one that you can add. One you've probably seen in the grocery store a million times and just never picked it up. So maybe it's time you pick it up this time and include it in your, um, in your monthly diet, <laughs> your rotation. <laughs> Um, and just to let you guys know too, so you're not surprised, tomorrow I do get my hair cut today. So tomorrow you will see a different hairstyle. All of this is about to go, y'all. I'm about to let it go, and I cannot wait. Um, so you'll see the outcome <laughs> tomorrow when I do my uh, video tomorrow. But that's it for today. I love you guys, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.